Alright, hello everyone and good morning. It is another beautiful day here in Munich, Germany. So today it's our second day exploring this beautiful city. The weather is a crisp minus three degrees, but the sun is out and it's so beautiful. And today I'm sure we're gonna be eating some more beautiful Bavarian food, but first we're gonna be stopping over at Cafe Frischut for some breakfast. I'm so excited. I hope you're excited as well. Let's go. Schmalznudel Cafe Frischut. It's um, like 9.15. There's no one here, which is really nice. It's really quiet. I know this place gets like really busy, but we're here for a couple of their basics. They only really serve like three types of pastries. It's gonna be a really nice uh, breakfast. Let's eat. And black tea. Yes. Then one with plums. The one with raisins. And two Schmalznudeln. Careful, it's hot, yeah? And if you like, you can put sugar on this tree. Ah, okay. Thank you. All right, best friend, we got what looks like some of the most delectable fried goods in the land. We got our little cappuccino. Shout out to their mugs. I want one. I want to buy one. Oh, yeah. First, the name of which eludes me. <laughs> kind of looks like a barbed sword. We also added some just some plain old sugar on top because I think it's just plain on the inside as well. It's yeah. very light. Let's, let's give it a taste. Ooh. Mm. That's really good. It's just like basic fried bread, like you know, like anywhere you go where there's fried bread, it's pretty much that. Mm. The sugar is pretty mandatory to just liven up the whole experience. Very light, very fluffy, very nice, very nice start. You want to try dip it in the coffee? I'm not even sure if this is an actual thing. But... Mm. It's like when you dip your panda salad coffee. Okay, it's time for the other fried bread. This is their schmaltz noodle. And we also poured some white sugar on top just to add some sweetness to it. Not too much. Oh, you already know it's going to be crispy, fluffy goodness. Oh, yeah. Ooh. All right, first bite. Mm. It's pretty much like the other bread. It's like crispy, a bit fluffy. It has like the thin, chewy parts as well. And it's just perfect with some sugar. And I also got some black tea. That's some good black tea. Probably because it's a bit of a loose leaf moment. That's great. And I want this mug. Very cute. We're gonna try the Rohrnudeln. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this is the um, one filled with raisins and this is the one filled with plum. Let's try open it up. Oh, okay. So it's just plain on the inside, but it looks really fluffy. So the most of the raisins are like here. Looks like it's got a bit of a caramelized bottom. And then this is the plum. Interesting. Is it filled? <gasps> Ooh. Oh, yes. It's got two plums. Plum first. Mmm. Mmm. That is so light. It's almost like the only texture you get is like the caramelized and crisp outer edges that were baked. That's lovely and the plum's not too intense. It's like a nice mellow tartness at the background. That's really good. I really like that. Raisin, same story. You got the caramelized and outer. Mmm. That's good as well. You know, if you like raisins and that's your thing, I personally prefer the plum just because it has more filling. And the last one, the most desserty of them all, is the uh, Krapfen or donut. So it's filled with an apricot jam. Oh yeah. We love to see that apricot jam. That looks enticing already. Yeah, cheers, apricot jam. Mmm. 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 That's 
That's nice. A good amount of mm. apricotiness. It's not too tart. Yeah. It's a bit more sweet. That is beautiful. I really like the crunch from all the sugar as well. Mm. It's almost like a second layer apart from like the um, the fried coating. We're having all this bread, but like we don't feel so heavy on the stomach. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You want that? You love it. Good start at Cafe Frischup. Mm. All right, it may be cold, but those pastries and coffee at Cafe Frischut really did warm us up. A nice classic spot, you know, a simple menu, but very, very effective. Anyway, uh, we're off to the uh, residence München now, or the royal residence in Munich. Um, gonna do some sightseeing finally. Let's go. All right, we're gonna come back here tomorrow to uh, the Victoria. We're in the Victorian Markt right now. This is uh, Schlemmermeyer's Leckerbissen, and my dad just got a nice roll with some uh, Nuremberger um, sausages. Oh yeah, this is like super simple. Got three sausages, mustard, a nice crusty bread roll, which is crusty but not dry, which is really nice. You can see the steam. That's really good. Oh, oh, what's this? More for you. Oh, I know that. Which one? They got another sausage. I guess they were they needed their protein. Kese Um which I'm guessing is cheese something. Oh, he's doing an alpha combo sausage with the bread that already has sausage. <laughs> yeah. You already know. Mm. Anyway, my turn. I also oh. needed a protein hit. You know, swole era. But I do love me a good sausage, and this looks very good. It's very steamy. Oh, that snap, mm. that cheese. I feel like I'm appreciating mustard these days being here. Huh. That's good. That's the protein we needed that we were missing this morning. Onto the palace. She asked me to uh, run into the pigeons, so I'll do that. <laughs> Are you happy? Yes. I hate you. Anyway, here we are at the Residence München, the Residence Museum, the former royal residence of the uh, Wittelsbach family. I'm very excited. This is our first royal palace of this trip. Let's go inside. See, Yambi, this is why I told you to bring your student card. We no, we, 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 we save one euro. What value? <laughs> Spoiler alert, we are in fact not students. Our student IDs just haven't expired yet. You know, I'd say that's a face that would willingly expose their private nether regions. <laughs> that's a face of a fiend. The Munich residence is definitely a must-do for history and architecture buffs. The first buildings of the palace were constructed as early as 1385 and has been expanded throughout the centuries by the Wittelsbach monarchs who called this palace home. Personally, my three favorite rooms in the palace are actually the first three you visit. We started off with the Ancestral Gallery, which was decorated with extremely ornamental Rococo craftwork and filled with portraits of the Wittelsbach family. Right next door is the Grotto Courtyard, impressively decorated with seashells. Considering how the rest of the palace looks, it's so out of place, but that's kinda why I like it. And then literally the next door over is the gorgeous Antiquarium. It's the oldest room in the palace decorated with beautifully ornate paintings and contains a large collection of classical busts of various Roman emperors. We were fortunate enough to spend time alone in this beautiful hall and it felt like walking through a fairy tale. Now strolling through the palace felt like an endless showcase of extravagance and excess as we passed royal room after royal room and royal hall after royal hall with a good helping of royal artifacts and royal furniture. Like a lot of the city of Munich, the residence actually found itself in ruins after the Second World War, but it has been painstakingly reconstructed throughout the years. We made it out. Oh, so that around that took us around like two and a half hours, I think. 
But I think because since we were getting palaced out, we kind of just rushed around. But you could easily spend like four hours, especially if you had an audio guide. So definitely budget your time accordingly. So yeah, it's time for lunch now. We've heard of this place that does really legendary sausages. So let's go, I'm really hungry. Hello. Hello. Four? In the first floor? Uh, yes. All right, we have made it to lunch. I'm so excited. We just took like a 10 minute walk back to the old town and we are here at uh, Nürnberger Bratwurst Local Amdom, right in the shadow of the Frauenkirch. Like it's right next to it. I absolutely love the interior. It's so rustic and you just feel the history in this place. I'm actually not sure how old it is, but you just feel the history. They actually have two levels. The first level was kind of full. There was a lot of reserved tables, so they put us up here um, where there's a lot of space. After a lengthy visit to the Royal Palace, some good old sausages is what we need. Let's eat. Fake clink, she's not even gonna drink it doing it all for the TikTok. Go and drink it at least. Do it. Oh. Go on. You can't do it just for show. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cheers to cheers. the actual people who are drinking. Um, so <laughs> Dad just got like a normal Augustino beer, which is one of the other main breweries in Munich. Apparently it's actually that Augustiner is the local's favorite, not Hochboy, even though Hochboy is the most popular. It's good. Yep. And I got uh, Radler, which is half beer and half lemonade because I don't want that much beer in my system right now. I'll probably get one for dinner. Ooh, that tastes more like lemonade than it does beer actually. Yeah. This is nice. I like this. You know, it's a bit sweet. You know, not not too hoppy or it's beer. German shandy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a German shandy. I like it. Mm. <laughs> the artillery has truly arrived. We got a couple of sausages and a couple of sides, some with mashed potatoes, some with sauerkraut. What should we start off with, Yandy? This one? Yes. I think this is the cheese sausage. I feel like it's similar to the one we had this morning. It's got that snap. Mm. Oh. That's so good. That is amazing. It's got the snap again, and it is so juicy and lightly cheesy on the inside. <sighs> wow. You gotta chase it, obviously. Eat some sauerkraut. Mm. Mm, it's not, that's pretty good. It's not that intense in the fermentation or the funk of it. It's got a light tang. What's not to love? Now I'll try the um, the Stadwurst, which apparently is also a Munich uh, sausage. That's what is described on the menu. Mm. That's nice. We're smoky. I feel like there's like some pepper in there as well, which is nice. Same, same, but different. That's that's another good sausage. Of course, we have more sausages. We also got their apparently their most popular flavor, Doros bratwurst. Instead of sauerkraut, we opted for their potato salad. It's looking pretty good, so we'll get a bit of both. So this one is definitely a bit more more skinny, so if you want to feed a whole family, you definitely will have to get quite a lot. But let's just do it by itself first. Mm, I really like that. It's very smoky because of the char, like that outside just does so much to the actual sausage. Like it just adds so much of a nice char flavor. Very simple pork sausage. There's not too much going on in terms of like herbage or like spices, but I personally like my sausages like that. Yes, not about the size, but yeah, let's have it with some potato salad. It looks very creamy. Kind of like that. Oops. Mm. Like very simple. Has a bit of a slight tang to it to kind of balance out that very meaty pork. It's a, it's a good combo. We've got an incredibly beautiful Bavarian butcher's platter that's rotated like a Miss Universe model on the runway. It's got a whole heap of radishes, We've got some onions whole radishes, some veg, obatska, or like the Bavarian cheese dip, some country-style sausages. I'm just gonna put some of the obatska with the radish. Mmm. Mmm. 
I'm gonna try the obot stuff. Mm, it's good. It's like German cheese spread. I think it's half butter and half cheese. So it's very, very Moorish. But it really went well with that very light and refreshing radish. Maybe let's go for this little sausage right here. Yeah. Mm. You can definitely feel like the flecks of fat in that sausage. Really good. This is a spreadable one again. So another piece of bread will go there. Mm. Mm. It's nice. It's almost like Korean like flavor and texture. It's really good as well. And finally, the gray looking one that I feel like this needs to be eaten by itself. Mm. That's really good as well. There's like a fat acidity in it, which is really nice. Kaiser right. Schmar. Kaiser time. <laughs> it's time for dessert. We did not expect such a big portion, but it smells so good. Yeah, pretty much like pancakes, but like if you kind of mess it up, that's kind of what you do to it. That's what I do sometimes. There's some raisins on top, icing sugar, slivered almonds. It also comes with applesauce, you know. Let's get some. It smells so buttery, and you know that crispy top, moist inside. Ooh, apple -y. Gloop, gloop. Let's just add a bit. You know, I'm not too fond of apples, so let's not put too much. I want to get some like more moist pieces and some crunchier pieces. Mm. That's very comforting. It's like not too sweet, especially having all those delicious sausages. You know, the apple sauce adds like just the perfect amount of appleiness where it still makes the pastry itself shine. It's great. Really nice. Highly recommend. Mm. Did you enjoy yourself, Yambi? That's good. That's good. Ah, now it's on to the next place. Let's get some exercise and some steps. All right, Ambi, would you say we are in dire need of exercise and some steps? Well, good news. We're climbing up that. You ready, best friend? Yes. Let's go. All right, um, we are officially walking off those sausages and climbing the St. Peter's Church of Munich. Fun fact, it is actually the oldest church in Munich and we know that because they didn't have the foresight of a few hundred years to install a couple of elevators. So it is all stairs all the way to the top. I believe it's around 300-ish stairs. I'll correct myself, but this is... Clearly trying to climb up and vlogging, it's taking an exhausting toll on me. But let's head up. Oh! We're here. Oh, that was easy. 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 Oh, thank you. All right, a beautiful view here at uh, St. Peter's Church, but I'm freezing. Let's get down. I would say, because you can also climb the Frauenkirch, which is the two onion-shaped domes, and it's much taller. It's the more famous church. But I reckon it's kind of like going to New York and not climbing up the Empire State. Because you, you actually... No, no, but like you... For example, like you'd want to go to the Rockefeller because you actually want to see the Empire State. So the analogy here is that go to St. Peter's so you can actually see the Marienplatz and Frauenkirch in the same view. So, you know, it's actually really nice, really easy. It's only like five, three euros, depending on your ticket. Really good. Oh, whoa, yeah, and me, it's snowing. Is that snow on your hair? Oh! I know it's not a novelty to the people of Munich anymore, but look, I've got snow on my uh, hair. 
Yeah, snow. It is so warm in here. It was getting really cold outside, it's, and my face was starting to get numb, but we have finally made it across the river Izar at Red's house in Da'ao. And they specialize in one thing, and it's their canoodle or their dumpling. So we got a couple of dumpling dishes as well. They serve a uh, Paulana beer. The beer sizes I'm getting this trip is getting smaller and smaller. We started from a liter like the other day, got, got down to 500 rather, and now this is the 0.300. Uh, you know, I'm getting bearded out really quickly, but you know, we gotta partake in the holy Munich tradition. I got the wheat beer. It's beer. Yeah. Dad got the point five. He got the dark beer. I'm just gonna try it as well. It's beer, but darker. You love to see it. Honestly though, beer in Munich is like, it's so much easier to down. I get why they have it for breakfast now, but onto the food. I'm hungry, let's eat. Okay, it's dumpling time, and I'm gonna taste the dumplings because I am a dumpling. Anyway, we're gonna start off with the spinach one. So we got two flavors. This one's the spinach, and it has like a tomato cherry sauce with some pesto. And then here, we have a beetroot one, and underneath is like this apple, celery kind of sauce. They actually have a third flavor as well. So you can get like a trio platter, so it comes with like one each of the three. I am excited because dumplings tend to have a bit of that chew, and I do enjoy that kind of texture. So let's cut into it. Oh yeah, you know that's gonna be a chewy, chewy bite. Oh, shout out to Chewy. Make sure to have some pesto first. Bye! Yeah, that tomato sauce is really tomatoey. Spinach is very mild in flavor, so you can taste that pesto really well and like you really need that sauce to kind of add some flavor. But it's really good. I really like the texture as well. It's like fluffy but chewy but dense. Okay, now it's time to try the beetroot. Oh, it also has like a beetroot chip on top. But yeah, let's cut that in half. I believe the dumplings here are like a bread dumpling compared to yesterday's one where we went to the beer hall and it was like a potato dumpling. But look at that, that's a beautiful color. And then we also have apple, celery. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get a bit of this. Yeah, it's like different. Also, kind of has like a neutral-ish flavor, but like a very underlying beetroot note. Beetroot tends to be a bit mild, but it has like a really nice subtle flavor. Like this also adds like a nice fresh tanginess to it, and again, really fluffy, dense, chewy texture. Final dish here at Wert's House in the uh, We got their duck, their roast duck, and you know, we had the bread dumpling, but of course. We had to do it with a potato dumpling, which I'm very excited for. Some red, uh, some red sauerkraut, some gravy. Oh yeah, some dark gravy, and of course the the roast duck. We'll detach it crosswise here. Ooh. Oh yeah, that looks mightily nice. You know, I put some more gravy on it. That is really good, really well cooked duck. The skin, it's not crispy, it's not like fried chicken or anything. But it has a real nice bouncy, fatty texture and flavor to it that I really like. We gotta follow it up with the potato dumpling. Reapply some gravy. That's good. Honestly, it's the texture that I really love about it. It's just potato and some other stuff and some sauerkraut. Red sauerkraut is like a bit sweeter than your normal white one, which I really like. Let's get another bite of this duck, from maybe from a different area. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so good. Really well seasoned as well. I think I got a bit of a fattier paste there. Amazing uh, stuff at Witch House in the out. Yeah. 
All right, we're all bundled up, and that concludes yet another cold day here in Munich. Oh, what would you say is your highlight for today, best friend? I'd say breakfast, because it was so peaceful, and it was just such a nice way to start our busy day. Honestly, all the places that we went to, quality, quality Munich food. Uh, we've got another day for you tomorrow. So yeah, that'll do for today. Thank you guys for watching another one of our food and travel videos live from Munich, and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.